Hi, Jeff Setzer from GSC here with another tip for those of you who use sheet metal in SOLIDWORKS. When people first learn about SOLIDWORKS sheet metal, in particular if they're kind of doing it on their own, they typically come across the sketch and pull edge flange type of arrangement to create sheet metal parts, which is fine for brackets and things like that. But if you have a situation where you're trying to make something like this offset shoot that's going to be made from some bent up pieces of metal that are welded together, that methodology is labor intensive and difficult to execute. There is a much easier way to do something like this with completely unfoldable sheet metal pieces that I'll show you in this video. So let's take a look. To make something like that offset shoot, we're going to actually use a strategy where we model the sort of volume that it encompasses and then pull sheet metal pieces off of that. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a couple of sketches here. We'll say that's going to be 24 and 36, like so. And I'm going to basically create a loft. So what I need to do is create another plane offset from there. I'll just click on that, control drag, to create that offset plane. I'll say I want 30 inches of distance there. And then we'll go ahead and sketch on there. And let's see here, let's go normal to that and just create another rectangle on this case here. I'm going to purposely not grab any relationships and I'll show you why in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is create that and we can go ahead and just manual dimension it here. As I decide I want to do that. So we'll say it's eight by 18 on the bottom. And then again, exactly where we're going to park this. I could absolutely park this on this line here and make it always in line or I could dimension it, but I'm going to specifically not do that. I'm going to be a little offset um, both directions, just like that. Okay, don't need to see this anymore. So there we have our sketches. And then what we're going to do is we're not going to do a lofted bend. I'm actually doing a regular solid loft. So these are not just for swoopy shapes. I'm going to go ahead and loft between these two rectangular sketches, pick near a corner so it knows how to match it up. And then we have our, our solid shape there. Now, I wanna be able to also have a flange around the top pieces here. So I'll just go ahead and sketch on that face. And I wanna do just a regular two inch offset. So I'm gonna offset from there. I'll say two inches, like so. And then in order to have some kind of a, a solid piece there, I'll just go ahead and extrude that. Doesn't, have, doesn't matter what how high it is. I'll just say it's an inch, just so I can see it. I'm kind of building like a form, okay? And then on the bottom here, I'm gonna pull that straight out. So we'll sketch there and I'll use my shortcut key here to grab the edges. I can double click to get out of that and then shortcut key again to extrude. So we'll just use a couple different UI stuff. And I say I want that to be, we'll say that's gonna be eight inches down. And there we have it. So now I have kind of like the, the, the form for my sheet metal pieces, and I wanna pull these off of each of these sides here. Now, one thing that's gonna happen well, when you do this is SolidWorks is going to wanna have edges so it knows where the sheet metal part that's gonna pull off exists. And that's where we come into a situation here where this is a single face. And I want it to be basically connecting this edge and this edge so it knows like where the bend is and things like that. The way you accomplish that is you do a sketch on that flat face, and then we're just gonna go ahead and do some lines, sketch lines, to connect the corners. And I'm gonna do a click drag technique here, which allows me to keep going and place them one after another without me having to reactivate the tool. Like that. Make sure you get the corners there. And then when you're done with that, get out of the sketch and we'll use that sketch, which is still selected, to put in a split line. So we're gonna split this face up. Again, split lines aren't just for like swoopy things. 
uh, or from roll design, they're really useful in doing the sheet metal technique here. Because what I just did now is I created these as separate faces. And why is that important? Because now I have an edge from here, 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 and here that SolidWorks will be able to follow when I use this very useful command in the sheet metal tools called convert to sheet metal. So this is can be interactive, can be a little automatic. I tend to do it more interactive because I like to just define exactly where I want the faces and the bends to be. What you basically do is set your sheet metal parameter thickness. You can use a gauge table or whatever you want to do. In my case, I'm just going to use this uh, 14 gauge material, and then you pick a face. So I'll pick could be any face here. Could be this one. Could be this one. I like to kind of go, go in one direction. So I'll pick this face as my neutral face. And then in terms of bend edge, I can say collect all bends, but I'm going to just go ahead and collect this bend. And you'll see how it adds the, this face on the other side of that bend. So if I click up in this area here, again, now that it knows that this is terminated, it can figure that out. Now, one last thing is make sure your bend directions, your, your thickness direction is correct. I like to go away because that way it, they're going to have interferences. If this goes the other way inside the sheet metal part, they're going to be interferences. So I go outside, so I model the inside volume, and I pull the material on the outside, and then do I want to keep the body? If I don't keep the body, what's going to happen is it's going to go ahead and execute that, and then it's going to hide that body, okay? That's not actually what I want to do. So I'll go ahead and edit that feature definition for this particular convert to solid, and I'm going to say, no, keep the body around, because I need it to pull off the other uh, convert solid flange I'm going to create. So let's go ahead and do convert to sheet metal again. Again, here, bend, bend, convert body, con keep body still on there. So I can just go ahead and say, okay. And once you get on a roll here, you can just go ahead, hit enter to repeat your last command, pick your face, pick your bends, right click for the green check mark and execute. Now the last one, um, when I do this, I am going to change one that can keep body setting because I'm not going to need that body anymore. It doesn't delete the body, okay? It's still there. It's just going to basically make it go away at the end of this. So you can always get it back if you need to, if you forget a face or whatever. So it's not like forever. It's just a convenience. But I'll say, okay, let's don't need the body anymore. And there we have our offset shoot. Really very easy. And if I go ahead and pick any one of these faces, uh, I'll get my corresponding flat pattern for that side that's going to be, of course, uh, cut out, formed, and then welded together to make my sheet metal part. Like that. Okay? Now, what's cool about this methodology is that these will follow as long as the faces are still the same. So if you do something totally out of control and, you know, add another, if you add another flange somewhere, like in the bottom, I'm just going to have to repick that, edit each convert solid, and add that other bend to it. If I create something that's not sheet metal available, like if I put a box in here on the solid, okay, or cut, that's going to be something I have to deal with manually. But, you know, when I had to shoot, and then maybe I'm not entirely sure where it's going to end up in terms of direction, okay, uh, I'm going to have Instant 3D turned on. So if I go ahead and click on this loft and I see these dimensions, I can do things like change the location like this. I can move it completely out. I'll set it that way, or I could, for example, yeah, make that uh, 21 if I want to, or some odd number. I literally pull it like way over here, and it'll maintain that. So obviously, you know, you're going to want to eventually put dimensions on that offset and everything else. But I just wanted to kind of show you how robust this methodology is. And again, I can go on to any one of these items, like that guy right there, and flatten it out, no problem. So building up the volume as a solid and then pulling sheet metal pieces off of each set of faces using convert to sheet metal is a really handy way to make a lot of you know, your hoppers and your shoots and things of that nature out of sheet metal. Or you could even make a complicated 
bracket without having to sketch if you already have a solid model that you want to pull things off of. So that does it for another sheet metal tip for solid recuser. To learn more, go to www.gsc-3d.com today.